St. Paul gave up a lot to follow the Lord. We go through this long list of his, of his lineage. He's a Jew of the highest caliber, of the greatest distinction. Um, we see very clearly he was not just one who was kind of, kind of practicing. He was very observant, and his family was too. For a long time, we see this. He was, he was circumcised on the eighth day, which means he was not a convert later, but he was born into it. He said, I'm of the race of Israel, but we have to say very specifically the tribe of Benjamin, meaning he's one of the two tribes in the south who were faithful the whole time. So he's saying, I'm not like the 10 northern tribes. I haven't mixed with Greeks. I haven't mixed with the Gentiles. My family's a pure blood family, All right? So this is something that's a deep source of pride for his family. I was a Hebrew of Hebrew parentage and a Pharisee by the observance of the law, meaning I was faithful in even the smallest things. And so I persecuted the church because I saw this as being something contrary to our way of life, something that was threatening to the Mosaic law. We heard Jesus himself say, something greater than Moses is here, something greater than the temple is here. How dare he say such things, right? Very offensive to Jewish ears. In righteousness based on the law, I was blameless. But all these things I've come to consider as a loss because of Christ. I'm willing to give up all that because I've come to meet the real Jesus. I've come to meet him. And who is this real Jesus? He's the one who will go after the one lost sheep. He came after me. St. Paul knows this. He's like, I, as much as I thought I was on the right path, I thought I had no need of repentance like the 99, but Jesus came for me. And because of that, he says, I'm willing to leave all that behind. <laughs> I'm willing to leave everything that I had behind because I realized Jesus is the fulfillment of everything I was hoping for. So I'm not going to be following those other things anymore. I'm following him. I'm only following those things if he still wants them, right? I follow them not for my own sake, but for his sake. And indeed, there was much rejoicing in heaven over St. Paul. And there's been much rejoicing over every sinner who's repented and come to the Lord. And there's rejoicing over you and me, the ones who maybe some days we don't think we need it. I've been very convicted recently that I very much need it. We all desperately need him every day. We see the value the Lord places in the individual, and, and the, we have this catechesis of the Good Shepherd, which is a, such a great gift for our parish, where we get to in, instruct the youngest children in the deepest mysteries, and this is the central mystery in the catechesis, is Jesus as the Good Shepherd. And it keeps getting revisited, but the most important thing about it is we recognize that Jesus loves each one of his sheep as if it's the only one. Well, you've got 99 others. Don't worry about that one. Ah, uh, no, I care very much about that one. I'm going to go get it. <laughs> and what a beautiful thing that, that we just, we desperately desire to be known, to be loved, to be seen, to be valued. See the value the woman places on that coin, right? Not just saying, oh, I got nine others. No, it's, I'm, I'm going to search restlessly till I find it. This is our God. He's not content until everyone is home. So let's ask God for that grace today that we would live into that, that we would respond to his invitation, we'd come home to him, that we would have a, a heart for those who have lost their way and we'd reach out to them today. Come Holy Spirit.